as you can see, the house behind me has got solar panels on the roof. We all understand how that works. The solar panels convert the sunlight into electricity and you use that in your home. And that makes an enormous difference. I've got solar panels, I think they're fantastic. They do work even in this country. But what about heating your home or heating your hot water? Now, an enormous amount of energy that's used in a house goes into heating the house and heating water. And does that come from the solar panels? Not really. Oh, but maybe it does, and that's what we're going to find out. Robert, let me show you the brains of the All right. of, of, of a house. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, the, uh, I, uh, there's one bit here I recognise definitely, the, the inverter. Yes. So you've got your solar panels on the roof. Yep. Power's coming into the inverter. But then you've got, a, that's, I haven't got one of those. I like that one. What does okay, that one so, tell us? Okay, so this, this is a diversion product which allows me to divert any excess energy uh, from the solar PV and divert it into the Sunamp PV battery. The icon on the left here is telling us how brightly the sun is shining and how much we're generating. So here you can see the figures changing. It's 2.21 kilowatts at the moment. Right. Within the house, we're not using a huge amount of electricity um, and we're exporting a little bit back to the grid. Right. But the important figure is is this one here and this is showing how much of that generation we're actually diverting into the sun amp heat battery right. so it's always slightly less than the, the solar panels are producing we always have a little bit going back to the grid yeah. but only a little tiny bit and that allows us to make sure that we never pull anything from the grid if we when we when we're charging yeah so not only have you had noticed a decrease in your electricity bill but presumably a decrease in your gas bill. I've had the Sunamp PV now for, uh, for over a year and um, we've done some calculations and we estimate that it's it's actually given us something like 75% of our of all of our hot water use through, throughout the year. Obviously in the winter months it, it won't provide everything uh, and so the combi has to kind of kick in to kind of make up the difference. 75% decrease in your gas bill effectively is Oh, Noticeable. stunning. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that, that is a heat battery. Yeah. Well, actually, it's two heat batteries. Right. I, I have to say I started off with one. Yeah. Andrew Bissell asked me if I'd do some experiments um, right. to see whether there would be any benefit in having an extra one to see if we could use more of my generation because we weren't using all of it by any means. E each one of these is five kilowatt hours of storage. Right. So the controller we saw before talks wirelessly to the power throttle up on the wall That's here. That's these boxes That's up here. That's it, yeah. So that power throttle controls how much energy is proportionally given to the heat battery. And when I say proportionally, it makes sure that it's not taking extra, any extra from the grid, which is what we don't want to. Yeah. We only want to use what's being generated by the, by the solar PV panels. So this links directly um, through to the back of my boiler here. So as you turn on the tap, the water flows through and it's instantaneously heated up to 58 degrees. Now, 58 degrees is actually slightly too hot. So inside here, we have a, a blending valve to take it down to a comfort level. But then does that, does that hot water then go into a, a hot water storage tank or is that just, that's just being fed directly into directly the boiler into, as you, into the as you need boiler. it? Right. Yeah, so it's, it's on demand. Right. So because it's instantaneous, it's coming from here, going straight into the combi. The combi then says, well, actually, this water's already hot. I don't need to do anything with it. Just say, like, there's, there's no one in the house. Yep. There's no one using hot water. It's sunny. That's, that charges itself up over the day, effectively. Absolutely. The water will be hot. I'm just trying to wait. I mean, yeah, it does no. store it. It, it, it stores it, it that stores heat. It stores it. Right. So conventional hot water cylinders have what's called a standing heat loss. And they have a standing heat loss of somewhere between two and a half and three and a half kilowatt hours a day. This, because of its vacuum insulation panels that are surround it, um, means it's only it's got less than 0.6 of a kilowatt hour loss in a day. Wow. Now, if you look at that over a year, yeah. just on standing heat losses, depending on how much you're paying for your electricity or gas, but that could be saving somebody something like a hundred pounds a year just, just on, on that just one on aspect. that sta one aspect, just on standing heat loss. Okay, this is the water test. This, this is the hot water, cold at the moment. Oh, oh, it's getting warmer now. That's amazing, that's solar heated water. 
It took, yeah, it took a moment because I was going, oh, I don't want to say because it's not that. Yeah, now it's hot. <laughs> it, was a, it went through a sort of warm period. Yeah. That is now, that is now yeah. extremely there's, hot. Yeah. There's, there's the length of pipe. Obviously, yes, that's basically what it is. That is hot. That, yeah. is prop that hurts. That is hot water now. Well, so Andrew, thank you for joining us. You know, I have been to your your facility up in yeah. Scotland and and seen the rudiments. And you explain what's great about my brain is you explain to me how it works, and I have no idea now. <laughs> <laughs> you did a brilliant explanation then, and it's all gone. Okay. So can you explain to me what 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 is in the Sun Amp sure. heat battery? Um, so I'm going to use to illustrate. I'm going to use uh, a very everyday object. You can go in camping goods shop and buy a hand warmer. Um, these hand warmers work by clicking the disc. Uh, they they oh, pop wow. into life, yes, and uh, and as you can see, it's changing from liquid to solid, right? And in the process, it's releasing heat. Go on, feel that. Oh it's warm, God, isn't yes. it? Yes, it's nice. I mean, it's actually hot. It's nice, but it's it's so uh, that that liquid and that chemical process. Then is that what's happening in here? Basically, what's happening in wow. here? Electricity goes in, it heats up the cells. The material inside them inside them melts until it's fully liquid, uh, and then we're ready. We've charged them. Right. So once they're like this. Uh, they actually stay hot. Uh, when, right. when we put cold water through from the pipes, yeah. through, we start to freeze the material. So as it gradually changes from that to that, we're extracting heat, and the water that's coming through that comes in cold from the mains comes out hot. Yeah, hot. And I think earlier you experienced that at the I, tap. If I, I can I, guarantee, that from uh, personal experience, it is hot. It is hot. Yes. <laughs> yeah. but, exactly. then, so, but then the, the reason you've used this, say, rather than a heating element in a tank, yeah. is, is, I'm assuming, because this is more efficient? Is that, is that it's more, correct? It, it's more compact. So inside, we have cells like this. So you know, these are just really a big version of this. Right. Uh, and apart from the fact they're a little bit different, they, they contain a lot more liquid or a lot more of the solid, yeah. so about 16 or 17 litres. And they also contain a heat exchanger. But that is doing the equivalent in 16 litres of what a hot water tank does in 50. Right. So 50 litres of hot so water big, big or 16 litres of phase change material. So actually it's for compactness primarily that we start with this. And you know, you've seen that what one of these units is perfectly good at doing all of the PV self-consumption for a house and delivering five kilowatt hours of storage. So you literally could ditch your hot... And that's what, because I think that's what yeah, I didn't understand before until I saw it yeah. in, in oh, situ. Yeah. Absolutely. Is you don't need that storage. Yeah. You don't need the yeah. water... You don't need hot Absolutely. water storage at all. And the nice thing is, you know, okay, yeah, Andy's got it here in, in his conservatory. Most people won't do that. They'll slide it between two kitchen units. Yeah or tuck it away or in the back in of the cupboard. cupboard. Or maybe the amount that we've got in total here is enough in a low energy house to give, to give everything, heating right. and hot water. So, uh, so could, this, you, could you run then central heating radiate, like, tra like yeah. traditional water yeah. filled radiators? Absolutely. That you could, yes. we, do, we do it. Yeah. I mean, wow. we do it in older houses that are right. that leak heat, like yes. a sieve. Yeah. We do it with much bigger units, things right. that are sort of, you know, the size of a fridge freezer. Yes. In, 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 in modern, passive house or low energy house type yeah. housing stock, we do it with units that are this kind of size. Right. So that's the whole heat storage for the house and the hot water, right. all in a little box. But so now a big concern, I know a lot of people have talked about with electric cars and batteries and the longevity of batteries and now with batteries in houses, like lithium ion batteries in houses, how long is that going to last? And you know, you're going to have to replace it after a certain number of years. So what is the story with these? I mean, do they, how, long, how long before you've got to replace them? Great question. Um, so. I'd like to be able to tell you that they only last to 80% and 5,000 cycles, right. but actually I can't because they've been on a cycle testing rig and at 20,000 cycles they haven't degraded yet. So wait a minute, 20,000, so they've been charged and drained 20,000 yeah. times yeah. and they're, so, well, and and they're, they're still 100% of their original. exactly what they wow. were at the beginning. And I can't work out how long in, well, in what, time 20,000 One charges. cycle a day, 20,000 is over 50 years. In fact, 50, right. 55 something years. Yeah. Right. So the biggest things we're building at the moment, or we're, we're, we're just embarking on building, are container scale. So this oh, would be a, a single cell the size of a shipping container. Right. And that can store about 2,000 kilowatt hours of heat. Right. So this is 2 kilowatt hours, right. and that's 2,000. And you know, if you've got a big facility, maybe a, maybe, maybe a, a big hotel or, or maybe a, hospital a, or, a district yeah. heating system, a hospital, right. those can store one and a half to two megawatt hours, so right. 1,500 to 2,000 kilowatt hours. Right. And we can either use them for easy deployment, for example, into the basement of a hotel or into a plant room on a district heating network, 
or, and this is a really exciting new thing, for which we've just applied for the funding. So, you know, it's in the lap of the gods a bit whether we get it, but we're, we've applied with Bristol City Council just near here uh, to move heat by barge from Avonmouth, where they have lots of waste heat, to Bristol City Centre, where they're building a district heating system. Wow. So this is a way for us to reuse waste heat. So this is heat that's the moment just thrown into the, the air or thrown wow. into the water. We'll be capturing it putting it in lots of containers on a barge, moving the barge up the River Avon, and discharging it into the district heating in, in the city centre, which wow. means they'll be burning less fuel yes. in the city centre, which also helps promote air quality. I mean, I, I love the fact that yeah. we're doing things now uh, as the human race that have never been possible before. Because yeah. you can imagine sort of Henry VIII's time, Indeed. let us bring fire into Bristol on a barge. <laughs> no, Henry, no, it's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> we can't bring heat on a boat. That's really bad. Leave the heat where it is in the bonfire. You know, whereas yeah. now you're absolutely, you're we're, shipping heat. We're shipping heat. That is extraordinary. Yeah. And, and what I love is that it's heat which is thrown away. I want to have a ride on the, when it's, well, running, when it's running, I want to have a ride you, on the heat you, barge. You can come on the heat yeah. barge. On a winter's day. Yeah. Yeah. Just stand on the barge like that. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that, that's the problem. It won't be hot. No, because <laughs> it'll be Damn. really well insulated. Damn. <laughs> so I'll be on the barge freezing. <laughs> oh, will. God, why did I say we do this? <laughs> If you want to find out more or just get a bit nerdy about energy and heat, Andy has set up a publicly viewable web page where you can go and see real-time data from his system. You can go back months, weeks, years. It's amazing. Anyway, that's all. If you have been, thank you for watching. <laughs>